took place there. And Srila Prabhupada told us how Kurukshetra, of course, is famous for the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna speaking Gita there, but it's also famous for the Rati Hatra. So it happened that there was a, a solar eclipse coming, and at that time, in order to counteract the inauspiciousness of the eclipse, Lord Krishna came from Dwarka along with his family and with a, a number of sages, they all came to Kurukshetra. And Lord Krishna had also written to Vrindavan and invited the gopis that they should come and meet him because he had not seen them for a long time. Lord Krishna, of course, when he was a young boy, practically still a young boy, 11, 12 years old, Akrura had come and taken him to Mathura. And then after staying in Mathura for some time, he had relocated to Dwarka and he had married many wives. So the gopis were always anxious for Lord Krishna's association. And they came there to Kurukshetra and they met Lord Krishna there. <coughs> However, it was a bit of a disappointment for them because it was a different mood from what they were used to. The gopis were used to Vrindavan and in Vrindavan there's the Yamuna River and there's the Govardhan Hill and there's peacocks. And <coughs> It's a village atmosphere. But Kurukshetra, at least 5,000 years ago, it was a, a very busy place. There were many chariots moving back and forward, and there were elephants also parading around. So it was a very different mood. And then when the gopis saw Krishna, it was a it was, just too much, it was a disappointment for them that this is not the same Krishna we know. We remember, maybe you have experienced yourself, you know, maybe when you go back to India and they say, oh, you're so different. You know? <laughs> so anyway, Lord Krishna had changed. He'd been in Dwarka. He was a prince in Dwarka and in Vrindavan, he was a cowherd boy. The cowherd boys, they carry the flute, and Lord Krishna was fond of wearing peacock feather in his hair. But those things were gone when he went to Dwarka. So Lord Krishna, seeing Lord, uh, the gopis rather, seeing Lord Krishna in this manner, they, they were not satisfied and they thought, we have to bring you back to Vrindavan. So the whole Rati Atra festival is the mood of bringing Krishna to Vrindavan. And for thousands of years now, the Rati Atra festival has been celebrated. 500 years ago, of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there and he was taking part in the festival regularly and he would organize it also. He would organize the kirtan parties around the chariot. 
and in each kirtan party, there were, just like tonight, wonderful kirtan was, you know, expert madanga player, expert singing and kartal players, everything was very, very well orchestrated. So, Lord Chaitanya would organize the Rathiyatra festival also. He would organize it because the people would come from, not only from Orissa, they would come all the way from Nabitwe, from Bengal, and they'd come there, and the different villages each had their own kirtan parties. And Lord Chaitanya would take part in the festival. And just as Lord Krishna would dance Rasa Lila, and when he would perform Rasa Lila, he would dance with each of the gopis. Each gopi was thinking, Lord Krishna is dancing with me. So similarly, when they had the Rathiyatra festival, the different kirtan parties were performing kirtan, and Lord Chaitanya, by his divine mystical power, he manifested himself in each of the kirtan parties. And each of the kirtan parties was thinking, Lord Chaitanya is in our kirtan. He's dancing in our group. And of course they would perform the Rathiyatra, pulling the chariot from the main temple of Jagannath Puri, which is not different from Dwarka, and they pull the chariot to Kundicha, which is like Vrindavan, Lord Krishna's home. And the Rathiyatra festival has, uh, there's a festival which takes place called Hera Panchami. It takes place on the fifth day after Lord Jagannath has come out of the temple and gone to Kundicha. Because Lord Jagannath had taken permission from his wife, the goddess of fortune, that he would go to his home to visit his family there in Vrindavan. And so the goddess of fortune agreed, but said, come back, don't be too long. <laughs> However, after five days she became impatient that what is going on and she came there with her servants and they went to Gundicha and every year they celebrate, they reenact this pastime, uh, goddess of fortune coming and uh, arresting the servants of Lord Jagannath. What's going on? Why are you not coming home like this? So, Rathiyatra is a very important festival for us in the ISKCON society. Of course, it was a very dear festival to Srila Prabhupada. And one of the aims of the Krishna Conscious Society is to hold these different festivals throughout the year. So, celebrating Rathiyatra is an important event. Srila Prabhupada would like to personally come and attend the Rathiyatra and on some occasions he would also dance in the Rathiyatra. Despite his elderly age, he liked to also dance in the Kirtan. He, sometimes he would sit on the chariot, but sometimes he would walk and say, no, I'm going to walk. And when he would take part in the procession, he would also dance and inspire the devotees to chant more. I remember one Rathiyatra which we put on in London. It was very grand. And Srila Prabhupada was impressed that, wow, you've done very well this year. The chariot was so huge and the prasadam was abundant and it was very elaborately decked. Everything was the Chariots were well decorated, so many flowers. So Srila Prabhupada was very pleased. But he was also surprised because he knew, you know, the Krishna consciousness movement in those days, we didn't have a lot of funds. We were practically living from day to day. The temple was always struggling to pay the rent and so on. And Srila Prabhupada was aware of the difficulties. 
And Srila Prabhupada said to the devotees, he said, how did you do it? You never usually have any funds. <laughs> Actually one time they had arranged to bring Prabhupada from the airport in London in a helicopter. So the next year Prabhupada came again and he said, oh last year you brought me in a helicopter. Why is it this year we're in a car? They said, Srila Prabhupada, we're still paying for the helicopter. <laughs> Uh, helicopters are not cheap. <laughs> anyway, uh, Srila Prabhupada appreciated our difficulties and he was <coughs> impressed that we managed somehow to make such an elaborate festival. And he said, how did you do it? So they told him how one devotee, who, one young devotee, a brahmachari at the time, they put him in charge of the Rathiyatra. But they told him, there's no money. Don't ask the temple for any money. There's no money. But somehow Krishna arranged that this devotee got an inheritance just before the Ratiyatra festival was taking place. He received an inheritance from his one of the family who passed away and left a sum of money which he had inherited. So he used all that money for the Ratiyatra. And when they told Srila Prabhupada this, Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada remarked, he said, money well spent. <laughs> he didn't say, oh, they should have given it to me for my book fund, or they should have given it to the town. He said, money well spent. He appreciated that it was being used for it in a nice manner. And so Prabhupada liked very much that we make nice festivals for the honor of Lord Krishna and the different occasions. Our whole Krishna conscious program is to glorify Lord Krishna, to worship Krishna. How to worship Krishna? Well, we offer fruits and flowers, we offer tasty foodstuffs, and also kirtan, having nice kirtan, chanting of the holy name, and bringing together people from everywhere, inviting everyone to come and take part. Everyone likes festivals. So Rathi Atra is the original street festival. Of course we're not having it in a street this evening, you know. In this part of the world our Rathi Atras are more enclosed. In some other places sometimes we have Rathi Atra in the football park you know, the football stadium. But everywhere, according to the time and circumstances, if we make an attempt to glorify the Lord of the universe. That is our real business, the devotees coming together, chanting the holy name, distributing prasada, and discussing topics of Krishna. People come and see the Rathiatra, they see Lord Jagannath on the chariot. It is said, everyone who comes to Rathiyatra and sees the Lord on his chariot, they are liberated. So, Prabhupada was asked about this also. The devotee said, Prabhupada, is it true? Is everyone liberated? And Srila Prabhupada said, yes. He said, you have a chance. Now stay liberated. Don't go back to the material life. Remain on the transcendental platform. That's important for us to keep our Krishna consciousness. These festivals are a wonderful boost for us to elevate our Krishna consciousness from the mundane to bring us to the higher platform. We want to stay up there. We want to remain on the transcendental platform. And certainly we can do it by remembering the holy name, by remembering the pastimes of Lord Jagannath. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita it describes how there was a discussion between two of Lord Chaitanya's devotees. 
Swarup Damodar, who was the secretary of Lord Chaitanya, and Srivas Pandit. You know Srivas Pandit from the Panchatattva? Srivas Pandit is an expansion of Narada Muni. Now Narada Muni is a Vaikuntha Vasi. So they were having a discussion together. When that Hera Panchami event took place, then Srivas Pandit was impressed. He said, oh, just look at the opulence of the goddess of fortune. She's so opulent, she's so powerful, she's got all the servants of Jagannath under her. But Swarup Damodar said, oh, you don't know the opulence of Vrindavan. You think the goddess of fortune is opulent? Don't you know in Vrindavan, all of the cows are Kamadenu cows. All of the trees are Kalpabriksha trees. And all of the dust of Vrindavan is Chintamani. But the people of Vrindavan are so much in love with Krishna, they do not desire anything other than from the cows, they desire milk to offer to Lord Krishna. And from the trees, they desire only fruits and flowers to offer to Lord Krishna. They don't desire anything for their own sense gratification. Although all of the dust and all of the cows and all of the trees are so transcendentally empowered that they can fulfill all of our desires. The people of Vrindavan have no material desire. They simply desire for the service of Lord Krishna. So this is the, the mood which we should have in Krishna consciousness. We should simply want to serve Krishna, to please Krishna. Srila Prabhupada was in New York, but he would say, I am not in New York, I am in Vrindavan, because I am always thinking of Krishna. So in the same way, this Rathyatra festival is an opportunity to bring us to Vrindavan, to enrich our remembrance of Lord Krishna. We want to stay there in Vrindavan. At least mentally, we want to be there in Vrindavan. They say Vrindavan, land of no return. Right? You go to Vrindavan, you don't want to leave there. That is the holy Dhamma, to be there with Lord Krishna and all of his devotees. So we are reenacting the Vrindavan pastimes here this evening by this Rathi Atra festival. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinash Narasimha Maharaj Ki. Jai. 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 Maharaj, a couple of questions. If you have any questions, you can ask Maharaj. Maharaj can take a couple of questions. It can be any subject, spiritual, Maharaj can answer. Yes. <coughs> hey, you can I come. Can speak. Thank yeah. you, Maharaj. It was a very interesting session that you enlightened us with the knowledge. Today we learned something. It is great. So one question what I have is that why Mayapur become Ishkamsa? What is the reason behind that? There are many holy places including Kuruskhetra uh, or Vrindavan. But then why it was decided to set up this kind of largest temple in Mayapur? Yes. Uh, Srila Prabhupada used to say that Vrindavan was his home and Mumbai was his office. <laughs> and Vrindavan was, uh, Mayapur was his place of worship. And he made, in the very beginning of our society, he made Mayapur 
the headquarters of the ISKCON society. That was the, and every year he organized at the Gorpurnima time that the members, the managing council, that they should come together there in Mayapur and meet and discuss how to uh, facilitate the propaganda of Krishna consciousness on a bigger scale. So Srila Prabhupada certainly wanted Mayapur to be headquarters. Actually, Jaipataka Swami told us that uh, at one point Prabhupada also thought about Shantipur and he was going to Shantipur. He liked Shantipur but somehow couldn't get the land there. And so then it happened that they got that land in Mayapur. And Prabhupada's god brothers, they're all there in Mayapur. And his Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, his main office was there in Mayapur. And uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur's house is just across from Mayapur, it's where Ganj. So it's certainly like a, a Mecca. Is what, you know, the central place for a Krishna consciousness movement. The Gaudiya Mat is headquarters are there. For the Gaudiya Vaishnavism, it's the central place. In Vrindavan, there are so many Pandyas and other groups, and, you know, everything is there. It's a bit more dangerous. Um, Jagannath Puri. Things are a bit also difficult there. But Prabhupada wanted Mayapur, he liked Mayapur. And he encouraged the devotees uh, come to Mayapur, visit the Holy Dham. Okay? Was it also because Maharaj uh, Maya, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born in Mayapur? So yes, so right. Mataji the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there in Mayapur, the yoga peak that was discovered, located by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati came and also developed there. But the, the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the, the whole Navadvip Dham, there's many places of the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If you go around the area, there's many different ancient deities. Like in uh, Champahati, there's a place called Champahati, you can see the deities of Gaur Gadarhar are there. They were worshipped by one of the uh, Brothers of uh, Srivas Pandit he re resided there. Gorgadhar, the deities are more than 500 years old. And then in, in uh, Beopakoa, the deity of Nilambar Chakravarti. Nilambar Chakravarti was the father of Sachimata. And the deity which was in their family for more than 700 years is there at Bilpakur. So like that there's a number of different deities around the area. They're all in that Navadweep lotus. So our temple is not quite in the center of the lotus, but Prabhupada said our temple is the Karmastan. There's a Janmastan, which is the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya, and Prabhupada said our, set, our temple at Mayapur, which is, which is about 20 minutes walk from the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya, that is, a, that is the Karmastan, the place of the work of Lord Chaitanya. And it's a base for the preachers to go out around the world and spread Krishna consciousness. Okay. Thank you, Manaj. Uh, we are going to have a, again sharp kirtan while we prepare uh, Jagna uh, ready for pulling. Sharp kirtan.